In 1983, Ron contacted Whites Electronics of Sweet Home, Oregon, and presenting the project to them, asked if they would donate metal detectors to be used in the research. His theory was that perhaps the location of the metal fittings which connected the timbers could be detected. I had contacted White Electronics uh, in Oregon and made them aware of what I wanted to do and asked them if they had some uh, metal detectors that would penetrate a little deeper into the soil than uh, the usual ones. And so they were kind enough to uh, send me their two best metal detectors. It was also in 1983 that Ron read about Colonel Jim Irwin, the astronaut, who was searching Mount Ararat for the Ark. Ron drove to Colorado Springs and met with him, explaining about the boat-shaped object. Colonel Irwin expressed interest in seeing the site, and in August of 1984, the two men flew together to Turkey. Before going to Dobizit, Colonel Irwin met with some friends in Ankara and took Ron along. At their home, Ron was introduced to several people who would soon change the course of his research. Orhan Basar and Mene Unler would become Ron's official liaisons with the Turkish government, assisting him in obtaining the necessary permits to continue his research. Arriving in Dobizit, Colonel Irwin met with his group, and Ron took several of them to the site. Orhan Bazar obtained official permission for Ron to do metal detector scans, and they scanned the entire object with the ferromagnetic metal detectors. Ron found 13 lines of consistent metal readings lengthwise along the object. Colonel Irwin, in a 1986 conversation with Ron, tells about the results of those scans. We decided that since there was some metal in those analyses that we got back from Galbraith that it might be worthwhile to um, look at the boat with a metal detector. And so, you know, remember you expressed a desire to be there when we checked this out, and you were there. Yeah, we got some real positive readings, didn't we? Yeah. As we went up and down the, the long direction of right. the formation. And then, uh, at that moment in time, we were getting metal readings, right. but other than that they appeared at fairly uniform uh, intervals. Right. This, the spacing made it uh, appear like, uh, very much like it was you know, a man-made object. Yeah, no doubt about that. When they returned to the hotel and word spread, several other arc hunters wanted to see the site. One group was headed by Marv Steffens, and when the metal detector scans were repeated, his group immediately got very excited. Ron and Orhan later spent an entire day examining the area above the boat-shaped object and visiting local villages, asking if anyone knew any stories about an ancient ship being in the region. They discovered that no one knew anything about a ship being located in the vicinity. They did learn that the village where Ron had found the anchor stones was known as the Place of the Eight, although the villagers admitted that they had no idea where the name came from. They also learned that the mountain the boat-shaped object was on was locally called a term which loosely translated to Doomsday Mountain, although again no one knew where these names came from. There is good reason why there is no record of any local traditions about the ark or a ship in the area. The original inhabitants of this region were attacked and displaced by the present inhabitants in the early years of this century. The invaders took over the lands, their homes, and even their flocks and herds. But all knowledge of any local traditions the original inhabitants may have had was lost. When Ron and Orhan scoured the countryside above the boat-shaped object, they discovered something which Ron believed was extremely important. They found a very strange section of earth approximately 120 feet long and 40 feet wide, which appeared to be outlined by a thick rim of petrified wood. 
scattered over and around this section were strange looking objects which looked like rocks but which were very heavy and felt like metal. Ron took specimens of this strange substance. He had also taken similar specimens from the lower broken section of the site and his theory was that it was ballast from the hull of the ark. He had earlier concluded that the ship had slid to its present location in a lava or mud flow and he now believed that this was a portion of the hull that had remained embedded in the earth. When the ark was carried down the mountainside, it was ripped away from this portion of the hull, causing the ballast material to be left lying scattered all around. In this same area, they also found a recently constructed stone structure which had pieces of an ancient broken stele incorporated in it. Being careful not to draw the attention of the locals to these broken pieces of stone, they photographed the pictures inscribed on these stones. Pieced together, these broken pieces depicted a boat-shaped object very similar to the 1950s aerial photograph. And within this boat shape were eight faces. The very unique mountain ridge above the boat shaped object was also depicted with ravens in flight and next to the ridge was depicted a volcanic looking mountain, a mountain that had since subsided. When Ron stood on the top of the ridge and looked south where this mountain was represented as being, he saw that there was a mountain in that location but that it was no longer visible from the viewpoint of the artist of the stele. This was, Ron was sure, the volcano that had erupted many, many years ago and covered the boat with lava. Since the broken pieces of the stele were found near the location of the section he believed was the bottom of the hull embedded in the earth, he believed this stele had once marked the original location of the ark. Orhan had also arranged permission for Ron to take more substantial specimens from the boat-shaped object as well as from the surrounding terrain. On August 25, 1984, Ron left Turkey with his specimens and headed towards Athens to connect with his overseas flight. When he arrived in Athens and purchased a newspaper, he read that Marv Steffens had called a news conference in Ankara about the time Ron had left and producing a bag of his own specimens, he announced that Noah's Ark had been found. He was immediately detained, accused of taking valuable artifacts, and with this, he proceeded to tell the authorities that Ron, too, had left taking specimens and was already out of the country. It had only been a little over four months since Ron and his two sons had been released from a three-month prison term in Saudi Arabia after being falsely accused of being Israeli spies, and he wasn't very happy at this turn of events. If the Turks believed he had taken valuable artifacts from their country, his days of working on Noah's Ark were finished. When he arrived in New York, he checked into the Carlton Hotel near the airport and called the Turkish United Nations mission, explaining what had happened. Within a few hours, three Turkish representatives arrived at his hotel, examined his specimens, and told him that he was free to keep them. They had checked with authorities in Ankara and discovered that he really did have permission to take the specimens. He was exonerated of the charges, but only after the whole event had made the newspapers and Ted Koppel had called him a thief on Nightline. However, what looked like a disaster turned out to be the event that first caused the Turks to take an official interest in the site. The United Nations Observer and International Report featured a full-page story on Ron and the evidence at the site. What Wyatt found measures almost identically to the text offered in the sixth chapter of Genesis in the Old Testament. It was also found in the area where the Bible says the ark finally came to rest. What we actually have found is physical evidence that this is a boat. Uh, whether or not it's Noah's Ark is up to the people that review the material. Uh, that's up to them to decide on that. My personal feeling is that it is Noah's Ark. 
Wyatt admits his skeptics are severe, and he has a long road to travel before his theories can be totally tested. The rock, wood, and metal samples are currently being analyzed with reports due on the specimens by mid-September. If it is the Ark, what has been proven? To the people that believe in God, this will be a confirmation of their faith. Wyatt firmly believes ultimately his find will be proven to be that of Noah's Ark. Even then, he says, there'll be some who still won't believe it. As far as the timing of this find, he has an explanation. But I think everything is on a time schedule, and I believe that when the time is right, these things will be brought out. Back at home, Ron sent one specimen that he had taken from the section he believed was the embedded hull above the ark to Colonel Irwin, who then sent it to Los Alamos National Labs for careful analysis.